Hi, Scissor in here, and we are going to read and go over the 323 Affliction Patch Notes. This is going to be, if you're watching this on YouTube, this is going to be like raw, unedited, but I will make like a big Scissor in's take on everything as well. So it depends what you want. Right. Where do we begin? Just a normal copy pasting, added ultimatum to the core game. Four new divination cards. Me and Steel Mage did forget to submit our new divination card idea. We did want to make div cards together, um, like touching divination cards, but we forgot. Um, so they're definitely not in because we have not submitted them yet. Um, hmm. Following uniques have been added to the core ruffle. Alana's Bait, Aquarius Gaze, Bound Fate, Dead Reckoning, Defiance of Destiny, Yao's Promise, Couture Certainty, Holmes Binding, Kilwaba's Bluster, Mata's Teaching, Rakiata's Dance, Hamaka's Timing, and Utula's Hunger. Well, Fans of Destiny is a very, very important one. So, that's good. Um, added 16 new unique items, 7 of these being new replica uniques, 5 new experimented base types. 633 more foiled unique items and most of these are garbage because as a community we really do suck we really do suck we do honestly and can we just take i like to do this every time can we just take a moment to really appreciate this like how much the game has changed in looks sound and effects wise like amazing amazing to the sound team the graphic team like this really should be like a big wall of everything that's been improved but they just throw it in there and it it really has changed so much over the years and it adds a lot to the game except performance well i'm on a really good pc from starforge hashtag odds so i have no performance issues for years now which is nice right let's look through things i'm gonna make it slightly bigger font so it's easier for you guys to read i am also getting old and i have a second kid on the way so you know everything's falling apart uh my eyes being one of them anyway hopefully this is a good size for you guys just don't be poor true ultimatum has been added to the core game replacing metamorph you will have approximately an eight percent chance to find trial master and his trial of chaos in maps Ultimatum encounters are now 10 rounds by default, though I sincerely hope you intend to last longer than two rounds. Yeesh! Path of Exile with the sass. Uh, you now have a chance to be teleported to the Trial Master's Arena for the 10th round in areas for the level A. I do wish they replaced Ritual more than anything. Like, so they combine the loot from Ritual, but the doing of Ultimatum, that would have been more fun. Um, you have a chance to be teleported to the Trial Master. Uh, arena for the 10th round area 81 or higher rather than this being guaranteed All right i wonder what the chance is so i found z i had a 0 0.02 drop rate in actual ultimatum league statisticians were calling me a freak incident but still um ultimatum modifiers have been rebalanced modifiers had three tiers of difficulty they now have four once they had three uh monsters no longer drop loot other than the trial master though they still grant xp Added a new tainted catalyst. That's nice, I think. Uh, it was kind of annoying with all the running run shit. Although it might be bad for anime weapon. Unless you're doing, um, if you're actually doing drop anime. Added a new tainted catalyst that could be obtained from Trial Master. It applies a random quality type and amount of quality to a corrupted ring, amulet, or belt. Oh. Oh. Very interesting. That's cool. That's cool. I like that. Hmm. Catalysts are now rewarded from ultimatum and are affected by map quantity. Val aspects um, combined into a new unique pool. Oh, interesting. Tower of Ordeals, unique engraved map. Oh, I hope. Oh my god. Oh my god, please be a watcher's eye. Please be a watcher's eye. Please be a watcher's eye. Like like that type. Like that type of unique. It says new. 
Oh, what you're saying? Type of jewel. Like something that's R&D that you want to keep doing repeatedly. Not something you do once. Um, well, last place previously known as Ultimate Mass Effect. Uh, Tire over deals, unique and grave math can no longer be open. We can once again vendor five inscribed ultimatum for a new one. Um, added a round count. That's actually pretty. Added a round count display. Kara can offer map missions to complete an ultimatum. Uh, Kara can offer for the ones to sell. Catalysts are no longer offered as a ritual reward. Good. Series incubators can no longer drop catalysts. Good. Metamorph rewards can replace with ultimatum rewards. Oh. Bad? I really wish they did more of one place is the only place to get things. You know? I, I wish they moved more towards that. I like I think one of the worst things they did for the game was when they started having every every reward from everywhere. Like that was my favorite part about heist is if you wanted things you had to do heist even though I didn't like heist. Um okay, expedition remnants Front running modifiers to their catalyst. Yeah, so all all those are just like reworks. Additional rewards on the okay, cool. Wing winged ultimatum scrubs might be really good. Uh the metamorph map crafting placed five metamorph clusters. Notable 15% chance for ultimatum. Oh, we're we can get really high chance for ultimatum then. Prove yourself and stand your ground. The seven percent increased XP. Start a higher tier. If you're higher, if possible. Okay. Sounds brickby. Can't reduce radius each time and cause them to grunt towards as though you completed an additional round. Dude, honestly, I feel like I will be an ultimatum main, and I'm not even a huge ultimatum fan. Oh, these are interesting. Lots of more rewards. Um, by ruin with their special abilities. Ultimatum monsters and modifiers deal 50% less damage. Oh, that sounds awful. Yeesh. Interesting. I'm going to say it a lot now because of you. Um, okay, cool. Intriguing. Gotcha. 20% reduced number of enemies. 100% increased chance to require you to protect the altar. Huh. And I have a hard time really grasping these compared to seeing them on an actual keystone. Maybe the font's too big. 100% increased chance to require you to stand in the stone circle with these types of encounters 25% radius. It just changes the way you interact with ultimatum. It just like changes what the goal is. Which is having problems, not this, right. Uh, added a new ultimatum cluster, grueling gauntlet. What the hell? All that. Three, last three additional rounds, but you can't have a boss. This is going to be super rewarding. I mean, I guess it'll just be different reasons and different types of builds that go for them. You know what? Ultimatum being back is a huge buff to the blight headhunter gloves for blight mains. Like, that's going to be huge. Why do people spoil not realizing they're going to get sniped? Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying not to read chat. There's not a huge reason to permaban people, but... It's not the worst thing either. Yeah, breath stealers. 50% chance increase unique items. Man, I don't know, like the font lower there. 50% currency, 50% div cards. Huh, okay. Sure if we'll just see somebody get a straight up mage blood from this. I mean, we will, obviously. Added a new ultimatum cluster which contains Brave the Tower Notable. 
That's the ultimatum boss to drop a full stack of random catalyst. Ooh. 30% chance for the final boss to include a boss. Wow. I wonder how farmable he'll be. 40% increased chance boss there, so 70%. The ethics review has been replaced with a new notable servant of order. It causes your map to have a chance to contain ultimatum. Oh, no chance. But to, oh, it's the blocking one. Shepherd of Souls, granted by Yalman's Accord Unique Scepter, no longer causes other Vile Skills to gain 50% of the consumed souls, and no longer causes non Vile Skills to deal 30% less damage, but instead it now causes non causes Val non Aura Skills to have 80% less soul cost, and Val non Aura Skills to have 100% increased soul cost per Vile Skill used in the past 8 seconds. Wow. Interesting. Huh. Accelerating an unstable catalyst can now be obtained from catalyst sources. Metamorph stash tab converted to an ultimatum stash tab, which can hold 5,000 of each catalyst and six inscribed ultimatums. Metamorph has been replaced by ultimate affinity. Metamorph Chained is dead. Removed from the game. Uh, they have all been added to the core drop pool. Astral Projector, Fury Valve, Mother's Embrace, and Warrior's Legacy. The Awakened and the Transformation Div card. Can we find there? Sextant for Metamorph. No longer roll. Shifting Ire has been removed. Right. That's fine. Cool. Actually, I mean, if you get DM'd a link by anyone on Twitch, you obviously do not open it for any reason. Um, other league changes. When a delirium fog has cost feast its movement due to players and getting other content, walking out of the mist will no longer cause the delirium fog to dissipate. Really? That sounds so nice. That's amazing! Reduced the drop rate of Forbidden Tomes. Expected. Reduced the drop rate of the Hour of Divinity and the Gilded Chalice Unique Relics. Which ones are these? I can't remember. That's good though. I think that's the best thing they could have done. The Deep Currency. Oh nice! Oh that's good. Those were really good changes. That means it'll still be really f rewarding and good to do. But just rarer to do it. That's awesome. Sanctum was nerfed just tome drops? Yeah, that seems pretty good. I like those changes. I mean, was there anyone that didn't think it was going to get nerfed? Like, it like it had to be nerfed. Atlas changes. All right, let's do my my normally three monthly thing of being happy or sad while reading out map names. The following maps have been added back to the atlas: Ancient City, Arid Lake, Ashenwood, Bramble Valley, Burial Chambers, Canyon, Conservatory, or Crater. Crimson Townmanship, Crystal Ore, <laughs> Desert, Dig, Dry Sea, Fields, Boundary, Gardens, Ghetto, <laughs> Grotto, uh, Jungle Valley. I forgot Laboratory existed. Honestly, that is so bad. Desert or Desert? Desert. Uh, Overgrown Ruin. Park. Plaza, Ramparts, Relic Chamber, Vulture, Spider there. I don't like Waste Pool. I know people love it, but just Toxic Sewer makes it disgusting. All right. Falling must have been removed from the Atlas. Alleyways. Arachnid Tomb? Sure. Take it. Spirals? Good. Beach? No! No! They ruined 
in the game. Was Beach just in for one patch? Was Beach just in for one patch? Didn't it just come back? Why did they take it? They ruined it. Can we sign a petition? Beach is so good. They removed cells though. Cold River, Courthouse, Dungeons Gone, Excavation, Factory. Wow, I had like such a like, wow, I did like a crazy Tarkov crossover in my, in my brain there and I was so confused. I was like, how do they know about Factory? It's my favorite map. Why is it gone? I was so confused. <laughs> I was like, huh? Um, Fungal Hollow, Geode, Graveyard gone. Damn. Haunted Mansion. Uh, that sucks. Lava Lake gone. That's good. Lee Lane's gone. That's terrible. It's my favorite way to farm lightning coil. At least we still have a cemetery. Malformation's gone. That kind of sucks. I like farming taste. I hate there. Um, it's like the nicest of those layouts too. I guess Fansmagoria is okay. Oh, that's gone too. Never mind. Mausoleum, Pen, Fansmagoria. Oh God. Are we literally farming core for taste of hate? Oh, that's awful, bro. Holy fuck. Pit, Primordial, Pool, Primordial. Block, Silo, Sulfur Vent, Sunken City, Terrace, Tower, and Water Race. Damn. I wonder what tier everything's going to be at. All right. Transfigured gems, alternative quality gems. Um, lab enchantments and eating threshold rules for our system are trying to suddenly modify the behavior skills with this expansion. They've been combined transfigured gems. They are alternative versions of gems. This system looks so good. The divine font at the end of the eternal lab is now a gem crafting device. So you can modify your skill and support gems. Ah, the percent, dude. I really hope that we get either, ideally, some streamers that are new at the game, but somebody putting in their gem into the increased gem thing, like putting them into the increased gem thing and breaking their gem because they're leveled it up too high now. It'll be so funny. Uh, the, uh, a substantial amount of damage dealing skills of other quality stats buffed in most cases it will be substantially more powerful and more interesting this is what d4 needs to do that's my biggest gripe with d4 is that instead of doing something interesting like you know the was it an amulet or something that changed the way a druid skill worked which was really cool and interesting they have so little of that and so much of more like here you go have another 100 percent damage whereas this is like all i want in games like let me change the way things work. Make it cool and interesting. Like that's like that's what I love in games. Oh, God. I hate I hate all of you that like honestly anyone that said that that's getting nerfed deserves a permaban. Like what a shit person. Like you're garbage people. Um Like, I don't understand why people would go through and read things early just to tell people. Are they proud that they have, like, the ability to skip through things? Like, I don't get it. It's so shit. It's so shit. Bro, that's a harsh thing to say to your fan. Well, they're garbage people and they deserve no happiness in their life. Um... Right, let's see. Continue. Could just be excited. No, they're garbage people. True, but gasp, true. The vendor recipe for turning a level 20 gem into 20 quality no longer works with skill, skill gems as the benefit quality provides to damage dealing skills is now more powerful. Wow! The vendor recipe can now only be used with non awakened support gems. Okay, that's fine. That's... Okay, so it still works on support gems. That's pretty good. I like that. I like that. At, le at least we can do it with support gems still. It makes sense. It makes sense. Anomalous Divergent and Phantasmal has been removed. Prime and Secondary can no longer be obtained. Existing items will be deleted upon logging in. Holy. Painted Blessings can no longer be obtained. And existing items will be deleted. A lot of deletions. Following divination cards have been temporarily disabled. Uh, Grand Spectrum. Whoa! 
no longer draw from Azara's treasure chest. They can now draw from Labyrinth Troves and Emperor Vault. Wow, only in the endgame ones. They don't want us speed farming them anymore. Imperial Delirium Orbs can no longer be obtained. Uh, maps that have Imperial Delirium Orbs, blah, blah, blah. Mysterious Incubator, Enchanted Incubator no longer drop. Lab Rewards no longer be obtained from other lead content. Logbook Remnants, now a chance to draw Ritual Splinters instead. Forez Fortification Safe House is now a chest of quality gems and her transportation is a trapped stash of gems. Richie's Betrayal Transportation is now reinforced to colors, a number, or links. Seeing the outcome with the very dearest. Leo's Betrayal is now a trapped stash. In order to replace the Rewards and Heist, they gave ult. We have done a rebalance of Rewards of Heist. The Grand Heist no longer differ based on the type of blueprint area. I like this. I think that's good because there was like, I would only run 30% of my heists, whereas now every single Grand Heist will be exciting if Heist is good, which that's just a balancing job. So I, I think that's really, really good. Instead of thinking like hovering over a Heist and going, oh, it's a shit one. I basically drop nothing. Um, Thieves Trinket. First pick up a Thieves Trinket rather than an, oh, okay, cool. That's good. Some of the more common but very low value currencies are no longer offered as a reward. Increase the stack size of currency. The endless misery, souls, wick, rare card, unique tools no longer be obtained, and the benefits are provided are found on transfigured gems. Vendor recipe for dead reckoning have also been removed. The anima stone no longer has plus one number of summon column, though existing versions are unaffected. Golem bills should be less dependent on the jewel to be effective and the set of transfigured skills to serve a similar purpose. Um, the Dead Reckoning will frame and debate types. Replicating changes. Okay. Skill jam changes. Oh my god. Zero to two max EA. Woo! Pull. Pull. Wow. EA buff. Damn. Sheesh. All right. Uh, am I looking through all of this? Honestly, I might. I might. It's not that many. An insane buff. Yeah, they might have nerfed it somewhere else though. I'd prefer if they nerfed it. It doesn't really matter. I don't think I'm playing EA even if they did buff or nerf it. Uh, honestly, without seeing anything, I am leaning towards Blight Contagion just because that would be classic. Um, Absolution, quality now calls his minions have 0 to 40 cooldown recovery rate, way better. Alchemist mark, quality, uh, effective mark instead of AoE. Ambush, 10% crit chance instead of CDR. Ancestral Cry, CDR. Um, Protector is more at range. Wow, 0 0.4 meters. That's a decent amount of space. Activation range. I love that they're moving away from damage on quality because damage on quality is so boring, especially because it's just increased. Like, I love that they're moving towards like actual utility and things that actually change the gem. It's so much better. Oh my god. Uh, no longer is 0 to 76 increased minion max life. Um, it now has 0% more minion max life and more. And by the way, all of these, they're just the base ones, right? These, like, they, we haven't even started touching on all the new ones we're getting. 0% more max life level 1 up to 38. Cool. Uh, anime weapon plus 2 max by base. Wow. Arc now has a base crit chance of 6. Wow. It no longer has 10% chance of shock. It has 15% more damage. With hits and ammo for each remaining chain. As the base? Oh, the quality is. Wow. Wow. The quality is one. Wow. It's an ailment. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Ignite Arc is definitely back. 
Wow. I mean, we do need to read the full thing, but holy fuck, dude. Poison arc, ignite arc, um, arcane cloak, 0 to 20 buff effect, Armageddon brand, 10% more damage with hit. Oh, man. Couldn't they have done hits and ailments for Armageddon brand too? No. Uh, artillery Ballista, plus one arrow, ball lightning, plus 0.2 meters to the radius? That's a lot more than 20% damage, no? Um, 20% effect on Bane. Barrage, plus one. CR on Battle Mage Cry. Bear Trap, plus one base duration. Berserk, 10% CDR. Blade Blast no longer detonates Blade Vortex Blades and no longer has 80% more AF effect per Blade Vortex Blade detonated. Quality now provides 0.1 meter to radius instead of 10% AOE. Isn't that exclusively for overlap? And won't make them push further away? Because the problem with AoE is it makes them push further away from each other. Oh, that could be insane. Blade Flurry. Blade Trap. Trap plus 0.1 second. Rotates one more time. Okay. Blade Vortex no longer has 10% crit chance for each blade. It deals a 3 to 5 fist damage at 1. Um. Oh, is this the? To I thought this was just talking about the quality changes. I didn't even like really dawn on me with arc, but this is all the changes that are happening to gems. To be fair, honestly, the gem changes are kind of irrelevant. They don't really need to buff, nerf, and tune things too much here because there's so many changes everywhere else. So there will be a whole new meta. Like th this will be such a whole new meta, no matter what they do. So, um. 3 to 5 is damage to gem level 1. Is that a 10% buff? Quality 0 to 5% hit rate for each blade. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that fucking correct? Bladefall no longer leaves 50% lingering blades if you don't cast a spell yourself. Uh, it also no longer. Has a 100% increased crit chance. It no longer has the critical tank. Okay. Zero to one volley. Interesting. Okay. Blade Storm. Zero to one max Blade Storms. Cool. Very good. Blade Storm could be really good for leveling. It actually might be the early me meta for, for melee leveling. Oh, uh, but you, you're not going to have... 20 quality early. But for like twin clothing, it'd be really nice. Blast rain, plus one arrow, huge. Salvo, blight, blink arrow. Whatever. Wait, blight. 0.8 seconds of base duration. That's actually insane. Um, wow, that's actually insane. Especially with the new contagion thing. I really wonder how the contagion thing's gonna work. Uh no longer has minions still damage life as minions. 0% more damage to gem level 1. Less at a higher level. Blink Arrow clones now deal 75 more damage and 50% more base life inherently. Body swap. Um, 0.4% of or 4% of your max life is base fire damage. Interesting. Bone offering. 10% increased effect. Bone shatter. Wow. What? Is, how's Karn feeling? Are we logging in with Bone Zone, dude? Brand Recall, 20% CDR. Alt quality dead, though? Need alt quality with quality like this. 
Burning Arrow. Dude, honestly, what I really like about what I'm seeing so far is even just the actual initial quality on a lot of these things are really fun and interesting already. Like, without even needing the new quality gems. Just the base gems are really, really interesting right now. Um, 20% more damage with Ignite on BA. Costing Arrow. Radius. Chain Hook. Allows you to gain one Rage if this skill hits any enemy. Wow. Three. That's so good for so many bosses for so many. Without needing to farm the all quality. Charge dash, 20 MS. Leave. Um, 0.1 meters to radius per nearby enemy up to a max of 1 meter. Overlash. Uh, Protectile steal 8% more damage with hits and ailments for each remaining chain. You receive 5%. It hits. And that's huge. No longer has 50 damage over time multiplier for poison. Interesting. Overlash could be really cool. I do say interesting a lot. Cold snap. Um, oh, quality is chain plus two. Um, 19% increased effect to chill. 20% more effect. Plus crater path. 10% more damage with hits to close your targets. Contagion, 0.2 radius. Ooh. So one of the big things besides the damage problem Chaos Kills are experiencing right now is the AoE on Contagion got nerfed a lot. Base radius will help a lot. A lot with that. Conversion Trap. I am very surprised they still have Conversion Trap in the game. Quality now provides plus 4 base radius. You know, maybe there's some crazy interaction that only like six people know about and they're just using conversion drop and farming ubers and shit. We just have no idea what it is. Like, why the fuck are they keeping conversion drop in the game? Um, crack. 10% more damage with its enablement per intensity. You can get five? Five intensity? Is that what we can get? Log in, get baited. Wonder if that makes a level five enhance worth it as a support gem. How much how much would a level five or six enhance do? How much more damage would that be? Fucking log in. 8% quality per level. Yeah, that's gonna be nuts. Bro. Interesting. Creeping frost, uh, radius, cremation, fire faster. Cyclone. No longer as first hit deals 50% less damage. Gain one stage. One stage. Uh, it now is 10%. Wait. It lost all of that. Now it's 10% ink AOE per... Oh, interesting. Interesting. Isn't that going to be really good? No more stages. No ramping. I hope it's big enough. Or melee strike range. You still need to get a lot of melee strike range, though. 10% MS. Uh, Dark Pack gets... 2% sacrifice Indian life. Toy life, 20% more. Destructive link, resident sleeper. Detonate dead, 15% chance. An additional corpse. Quality now provides more totem life and devouring totem. Discharge, 15% more area of effect per charge consumed at all gem levels. Quality is 10% chance to deal damage without removing charges. Discharge is insane, dude. Uh, now is a maximum of 10 stages. The beam now deals 240 damage. It hits per stage after the first. 110. 100% more damage with the ailments per stage after the first. Yeesh. No longer is 50% less damage while channeling. 
And 40% chance to get an additional stage while hitting normal. Aren't we just gonna one-shot bosses so easily with that? Wait, isn't this like the easiest thing for one-shotting Eater, XR, stuff like that? Isn't that literally just like one-shot bosses build? Divine Delete? That sounds crazy. The Touch of God? Divine Iron Totems actually sounds really fun. On Hyro. Dominating blow quality now provides minions of 0 to 40 increased cooldown recovery rate. Double strike. Double damage to bleeding enemies. Dual strike. No longer has the base crit chance. It's 60% more damage with hits and ailments against enemies that are on full life. Previously 30. Quality. 0 to 30 damage with hits and ailments. Okay. It's 90% more damage. Against hits and ailments on enemies that are full life. 90% more? Maybe dual strength is the true touch of God. Earthquake now causes the F-Truck to deal 0 to 30 more damage with hits and ailments. Okay. Man, have you noticed how much hits and ailments we're getting? Like they like honestly, this kind of qualifies for the dot buff on my um thing. Thanks, thanks. Um Earth Shatter, plus one Fisher, Elemental Hit, 5% more damage per Elemental Ailment on the enemy. Okay. I guess that stacks with the amulet, right? Uh, elemental Weakness, Ratio of Elemental Ailment. Hearing Cry, CDR, Energy Blade, 5% more maximum energy build. Snaring Arrow, debuff effect, nice. Essence Drain, regenerate 0.5 debuffs damage as life. Eh, hoping for something more fun. Thorough Knives, but maybe the other old quality ones for ED will be really interesting. EK, plus 2 proj, exsanguinate, uh, 1.5 base duration. Explosive Arrow, we already looked, but maximum uh, 2 arrows, that's huge. Make up for the 20% ignite loss though. And the skill effect duration. Um, yeah. Explosive concoction. Zero to fifteen plus charges. Explosive trap. Plus two smaller explosions. Yeesh. Iowinter winter plus two shard projectiles. Eighty percent trap trigger AOE. Fireball, base radius of 0 0.9 up to 1.4, 40% AOE buff. No longer as projectile gain radius as they travel further. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Plus two radius. Slightly less further away, a lot bigger, closer. Firestorm, 0.2 radius. Flame blast, an additional stage. Flame dash, modifiers to spell damage applied to this skill's damage over time effect. Flame Link, whatever. Flame Surge, 20% more damage with hits. Flame Wall, plus one wall. Flame Thrower Trap, CDR. Flame Ability. Increased Duration on Ignite. 20%. Good for a lot of builds. Uh, Flesh Offering, 10% Effect. Flicker Strike, 10% Frenzy on hit instead of 5. Forbidden Right. Or surrounding enemies. Good. Uh, a freezing pulse. Zero to oh, just no longer has zero to nineteen percent projectile speed. Quality on freezing pulse now does nothing. It now does nothing. Chat. They just removed it. You can't use TC pulse. I'm sorry. Um, frenzy quality is zero to two percent more attack damage for frenzy charge. Oh, wow. Uh, quality, I know. That level benefits. Probably, I can't remember. Wanted to make a joke, leave me alone. Quality now causes the skill to fire 0 to 2 projectiles. Frost Bomb no longer deals 4% more damage with hits per 0.1 duration. And the debuff no longer causes 75% reduced field regeneration rate. 
Isn't that terrible for Hologram Masters? Not that that matters, but isn't that terrible for Hologram Masters? They just make like so many Hologram Master builds, borderline immortal. I guess not. Could be fine still. Hero to 20 CDR damage. Frost wall, CDR. Frost blink, 10% max travel distance. Frozen Legion, 20 CDR. Galvanic. Frost speed. Um, General Cry is Mirage Warrior Max plus one. That's Glacial Cascade. Final burst, fifty percent more damage. Yeesh. Wow. You aim that thing. Glacial Hammer. Every third, you start to freeze enemies as you deal hundred percent more damage. Grand Slam, twenty percent more damage. With Target. Heavy strike, 20% chance to deal double damage. Herald of Agony plus 5 maximum virulence. Jeez, that's the base quality. Dude, I'm so curious about what all the new cool qualities we get. I'm so curious. Like, that's gonna be so good. This is the full patch notes, yep. Herald of Ice, plus two radius, Herald of Purity, CDR, Herald of Thunder, 20% faster. Uh, Holy Flame Totem, 40 pro speed. Ice Nova, no longer is 20 less AOE when cast on Frostbolt. It can also no longer expand from up to two Frostbolt projectiles. Uh, damage buff, this is significant damage buff. Very large damage buff. Quality up to 0 0.3 radius. And on effectiveness and damage. Wow, very nice. Yeah, very big. Mark is a huge buff, yeah. Aisha no longer gets effective cold ailments. Quality is angle. Ice spear. Quality now causes shards of ice in their second form to have up to 40 crit multi. Ice Trap, 50% chance to trigger an additional time. Icicle Mine, plus 2 Proj, Immortal Call, CDR, Incinerate, Max Stages. Dude, these are so many. Infernal Blow, 10% charge. Infernal Cry, CDR, CDR. Creation on Link. Kinetic Blast, 1 additional explosion. Wow. Wait, that'll be one more explosion? Per bolt, right? Or per blast? Like, it's not just one more. It's not the same as one more projectile. It just... Wait, isn't that... Isn't that just double damage? In our skill? That's great. No? It's pretty high, though. Each projectile has multiple blasts. Oh. Yeah, I know that the Hellman Chons are gone. What about Auras? They're just fucked. It's gonna be a very different game. Because I, I always go for the Restoration Hellman and Chant. Kinetic Bolt. Uh, cause increase in reduction spell damage to apply to attack damage. Nice. Arm the old quality if I want to use my gloves. Quality now provides 0 to 20 attack speed if you've changed stance recently. Quality, 0 to 1 projectile, and lancing skill, leap stem, stun duration, lightning arrow, two additional enemies near the target. Dude, just having that as base quality, fucking Christ. Dude, the base qualities are cracked now. GCPs are going to be so nice early. So nice, dude. Lightning conduit, 4% damage per 5% shock. Lightning Spire Drop, one additional area. Lightning Strike, one projectile. Tendrils, 40 crit multi. DCP Man is back. Lightning Trap, 15% chance to trigger additional time. Mana Bond. Damage based on their mana. Mirror Arrow, probably same as Blink Arrow. Molten Strike, 10% more damage with hits and ailments. 
While the Unarmed Storms is split towards two additional targets. Venus brand has been significantly simplified. It no longer spreads energy to nearby enemies or causes regular pulses while at maximum energy. And now as it immediately causes an explosion, uh, so do I. When the branded enemy reaches maximum energy, it no longer causes an explosion when it expires or detaches from an enemy, and it no longer has an attached duration. Instead, it remains attached to the enemy until it reaches maximum energy, then it expires immediately once the explosion occurs. It no longer gains damage or radius per energy. 265 base instead of 18 to 27. That's like a full rework. Uh, 3811 instead of 254. Added base damage of 570 instead of 40. And it activates every 0.1 second. Wait, so this is just like you attach tactical nuke to something. <laughs> Sticky bomb? <laughs> As I hair hold this. Can I five, please? I'm dumb. I mean, I didn't play much Penance Brand, but I guess it just doesn't need to charge up and it just like inst you click it and it's just It's just bang 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 bang. Right? With just crazy damage. Wait, isn't this just like... Why would you ever use Stormbound over this? No, it still charges? It now causes... Immediately causes an explosion when the branded enemy reaches maximum energy. Oh, you're right. You're right. It does still need to charge. LR gains damage radius per energy. Right. It's just that full potential. Right. Bellblade with 570%. It'll be interesting. One single boom at the end instead of a lot. I think it'll be really good. Oh, 30% less damage with ailments. I was gonna say, wasn't it be really good with Ignite? Um, perforate. No longer creates two additional spikes if you've changed stunts recently. 155 base attack, and that's 155. Probably worth it, yeah, maybe. Quality 0 to 2 spikes. Pestily strike, more duration. Plague bearer. Additional plague value instead of AoE. Poison conk. Select wither on hit. Fire Siphon. Oh, fire at 4 to 7 nearby enemies. Okay. Isn't that garbage? Isn't that like dead for single target now? Like, it's just for clearing now, right? It's basically just like the Val skill. I mean, it'll probably be a fun clearing skill, but it's literally dead for, like, a single target. That's fine. I'm gonna miss it, though. What if you use Barrage support? I don't know. We don't know. Maybe an old quality gem for the old one? Yeah, maybe. But this isn't a quality thing either. I don't know. We'll see, I guess. Protective link, whatever. Puncture, more damage from bleed. Punishment, debilitation for one second. Purifying flame, 10% more damage. Purity of elements, five more res. Oh, that's nice. That's so nice, dude. Purity of fire, 10% additional fire res. That's nice. Purity of ice, same. Lightning, same. They're nice. I love the new quality. Oh, interesting. Oh, but there was no new quality on auras. Power class mine, one more projectile. Rage. Let's create a rage storm. Rain of arrows. Four arrows. Ray Specter, 20 Ellie Res. Nice. Ray Zombie, no longer attack an enemy with an affected slam. They now only attack with a melee attack. Uh 38% more life. And plus one zombie for quality. 
Okay. Rallying Cry, CDR, Reap, 5% per blood charge. Wow. Wow. A lot of damage. Uh, Reap, plus two stages, CDR and Reckoning, Rejuve Totem, 20 more life. Righteous Fire. Righteous Fire no longer deals 2,447 base damage per second. Now deals 70% of your max life as base fire damage. Huh. Life and yes. Has anyone done uh, the math on this? So if I have 7,000 life, how does that compare to 2.4k? You need 7k life to break even. Damn. 40% DPS loss. You're only getting the added 35? Yeah. How's uh... I'm gonna send Pox a DM. Uh... Hey uh... How you, how you doing there buddy? Uh... Remember that there's a lot of things to live for and that life is pretty great and like, you know, a lot of cool things to try, you know? <laughs> he, he just replied, bro, I'm in shambles. <laughs> um, uh, man, the guy has an entire Wikipedia dedicated to the skill. <laughs> Holy shit. Ah, fuck. I feel bad for the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Poor Pox. Poor Pox. Yep. Rolling Magma plus two chains. Scorching Ray. Uh, additional debuff. Scourge Arrow plus one Thurn Arrow. Dude, I love the new qualities. Transfigured RF for sure brings back the base damage scaling, right? Yeah. Right about it. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> All right. Um, well, last make plus one wave, shattering steel, no longer consumes steel shard or around steel ward or has any of its steel ward stats. No longer has base durations five seconds. If you have no steel shards, so what does it have? I'm so confused. How did the steel seal work now? Isn't it garbage if it doesn't consume steel seals? Am I confused? Wait, isn't this skill just giga dead now? Like, <laughs> it's just not steel. Shattering steel doesn't. No need to call on steel. But didn't it lose all of its damage related to it too? Like, it feels garbage if you don't have steel chargers. So doesn't that mean this just always feels garbage now? Nah, it's just way less clunky. But there's nothing saying it's better now. It just sounds awful now. Like, <laughs> it must be missing some text. It literally, this, this right now, from what I'm reading, it basically just seals, says Shattering Seal just doesn't. Read it again. No longer consumes Steel Shards or Grand Steel Ward or has any Steel Ward stats. It no longer has base duration is five seconds. Uh, it no longer has, if you have no steel shards, only fires one projectile. Uh, or projectile steal up to 50% more damage per steel shards at the start of the moment. You can keep the charges now. It always fires all projectiles. So is it just the same that it's always empowered without you needing steel shards? 
Because that would make sense, but I don't feel like this says that. 50% less damage though? Yeah, that's what I mean. If it's 50% less damage... I think so, but it... So we have the additional projectiles. But we have lost 50% more damage. That still sounds garbage. This is better? Are you sure? I didn't have a problem keeping my steel charges up. Why would it be better? Why would it be better? I don't understand. Keeping the steel charges up were not a problem. Yeah, but it lost all the other modifiers and you can just use it. It's just always a full power. Okay, if you're sure, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced that's true. That's really divided on this one. Okay, I think we can all agree it's a little confusing. It's a little confusing either way. I'm not convinced. It's definitely a little confusing seeing as chat's pretty 50-50. I don't think we all, I don't think any of us are 100% sure here. We'll just, I guess we'll, we're not making league starters for this one. And we're a little bit like, oh, maybe, I don't know. You can try it. Let me know. Uh, I have no idea if that's, I guess they just, you know, it's peewee. It's confusing. Field crush, 10% more damage hits with closer targets. Uh, max effect of shock on shock nova, shockwave totem base radius. Shrapnel Ballista, 40 approach speed, Siege Ballista, 5% per max totem. Wow. Nice. Sigil of Power. Dude, I love the new base ones. There's so many good from old qualities that are just wrapped into the base one. 4% uh, less damage while at max stages. Although, I am also hoping that the new inscribed gems have like completely new interesting things and not just reworked... Um, not just reworked old quality things that we already had, but like very interesting. Smoke mine 20 ms, the knife plus one stage, soul link, whatever, soul rend, base duration 0.2. Spark, no longer is projectile speed. Um, the gem also describes how many projectiles it fires. Okay. Uh, plus two projectiles by base. Spectral helix, that more damage, yield two more projectiles. That more damage if it's pierced. All right, it's on the way back. Uh, spell Slinger. Before this, you also have added spell damage equal to 20% damage of each wand. If two wands are equipped, each contributes half as much added spell damage. Added damage. Quality no longer causes support. To... What does quality do now? Another case of quality just being a number that goes up. Um, spirit Offering. Priest effect. Split arrow plus four arrows. Spellslinger buff too low. Dude, honestly, I really want them to remove mana cost on Spellslinger. Like, I feel like it should be sufficient that we're re reserving our entire fucking mana pool to use it in the first place, considering how strong auras are. Like, what are we reserving our mana for if it's not the mana cost? Like, why? Give it to me. What do you mean mana cost? Do you mean restoration? No. When you're attacking and you shoot things out, unless something changed last patch that I didn't pay attention to, it costs mana in addition to the reservation. It still does, right? I'm not high. It does cost both, right? You reserve and you cost mana. It just, it does. Okay, thank fuck. I thought I was having a stroke there. Right. It shouldn't cost mana on top of the reservation. I thought I was having a stroke there. And like you're already sacrificing a gem link. Like it's a lot. You're investing a lot. It shouldn't be reserve and mana cost. It shouldn't be both. In my opinion. Uh, but I'm stupid. Whatever. Uh, splitting steel. Same thing with the steel stuff. Be on this. Weird. Static strike. Beam frequency. Storm brand. Plus one beam. Interesting. Storm burst. Duration. Storm call. 10% chance of lightning strike the marker when cast. Form rain, fine, plus one beam. Area effect for each time they'll be improved. Okay. Storm blast mine. No longer has 20% chance of shock or increased effect and now deals. Hey, more damage at level one. 
Uh, more damage at level 20. Wait, they're buffing Stormblast Mine? Why? Didn't they nerf that because they were tilted at racers going too fast? Uh, all golems buffed. Increased buff effect. Summon Raging Spirits. No longer has minions deal 38% more damage. Naturally gain this damage scaling with level. 30% um, chance to summon an extra minion. Summon Reaper. 10 chance to bleed. Our life. Skellies. Get plus one max skelly. Summon Stoner Golem. Same as the other golems mostly. Thunder boy, wave gain, plus one radius. Twins. Sweep, radius. Ecton slam, branching chance. Tempest shield, 40% chance to shook. Temporal rift. I've never used temporal rift. Tornado shot, um, 20. Tornado have 20% movement speed. Tornado shot, plus one proj. Toxic Rain. Uh, man, dude, the alt qualities for Tornado Shot are going to have to be spicy to compete. Toxic Strike, base duration. Uh, unearth. 30% max life. Um, Arc Link. 0.15 seconds of base duration. Vengeance. Vengeance. Venom Dryer, max 10 call projectile. You know, I've never used Venom Dryer, ever. I have no idea how this affects it. I've, I've just never used it. I've never even equipped the skill on my character. Never touched it. Kind of weird, actually. I kind of should. Vigilance Strike. Uh, a big dryer buff. It's huge. RF is basically done and not just on Twitch. Uh, Viper Strike, Void Sphere, CDR, Volatile Dead, or Movement Speed. Wow, that's so nice as the base quality, though. Um, Vortex has a cast time. Hold on, let me process. I'm, I haven't read most of it yet. I'm already sad. Vortex is a 0 0.0550 cast time previously instant. No longer has a cooldown time. It no longer be cast on a frostbolt projectile. No longer has AOE. And it has less damage. Is that going to be a Transfigured Gem? Currently. To be fair, that is important to remember. A lot of the things where you feel like your skill is maybe that gotten hit a lot. First off, I think even if you had a skill you were hoping to play and it got nerfed, it really doesn't matter because with all these changes, if you can't find something to play, I mean, like, I think we can all agree there's going to be something for everyone to play here, right? It's going to be fucking, you're not going to struggle for something to play. It's such a big shakeup. So this is an amazing patch, no matter what. Like, so whatever, right? I feel a little bit bad for Box because the man has a literal Wikipedia to one skill. So I feel a little bit bad. But, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff here to do. So if one thing is dead, it's fine. Still no League Starter, league starter shakeup, though. Uh, maybe. Well, uh, that depends. It might be. When we see the Transfigure Gems, absolutely might be. Because you get those early. Done, like. Uh, why are we assuming new gems have different quality bonuses? I mean, we're reading all the new quality bonuses. Um, I'm not sure you can count on getting those. Ah, easy. 
Wave of Conviction. I don't like what they did to Vortex, though. Like, Vortex was just so fun as an instant skill. I wanted more instant skills, not less. No AoE and Toxic Green skill, eh? I don't know. I'm so bad with the AoE calculations, dude. I still like... There was just so much people, like... I'm never going to be one of those people doing the AoE for Toxic Green stuff. There was, like, 50 people working together trying to figure out the max AoE. Like, you'll just have to get another 10 or 20% somewhere else. It's fine. Just need to have 39. Yeah, they want us to exclusively wait with walking builds until PoE2 chat. If you want, we can like talk a little bit about ballistas as well if you guys want to hear more. Um, we're gonna make sure no longer has 30% increased skill effect duration, base duration of 0.5, more penetration. Penetration is good. 15, holy fuck. Um, well, strike, quality, zero, okay. Okay, Winter War plus two max stages is the base one. Winter Tide Brand, 5% more damage per stage. Withering Step, two debuffs. Oh, that's so nice is the base one. Holy fuck. Dude, has anyone else struggled to farm that alt quality? I have. Or was it just the enchant that did that? I can't remember if it was alt quality or enchant, but whoo! You never scaled HP at all with R for damage? Wait, that's not true. You absolutely did back in the day. I had a fucking 10 or 11k RF where I specifically scaled back in the day for damage. So don't say never. In the past, yes. Why <laughs> you chose the wording never? <laughs> uh, while skill gem change quality. Okay. Is there any super interesting while skill? I'll skim through them. Plus two more max. They're probably very similar to their parents. Yeah, they they look pretty. Support gem changes. Recall. Oh, sure, we can look at Cyclone. Oh, whatever. Um, so enchants are just gone, correct? Awaken ancestral call. Further away. Ballista totem. Oh. 10% placement speed gone. Ahead. Last chain. 10%. Um. Blind effect. Bone chill. Cold damage. I think it's super interesting on the support themes. My reaction was why though on Ballista? Yeah. Falling strike. Cover. Frenzy. Flame would support 10%. Fortify duration. No super interesting quality on the port gems. Not compared to the mains anyway. That's the damage taken is interesting. Numbers that reduce damage taken to trigger. Oh. Yeah, that is probably the most interesting. Ice by 2% increased damage for frenzy charges. Oh yeah, where's Impending Doom? Did they say anything about Impending Doom? Maybe they say something later. Uh, 5%... Oh, wow, Jesus Christ. That isn't it. What about... What was the other one that had that as well? Was it Swift Affliction? No. Affixie? What's Affixie got now? Uh, it didn't change. Alright. Miscellaneous gem changes. Update the description. Increase minion speed to minions. There's one found on Animate Guardian. It does not affect other minions from other. Many skill gems now display the total number of projectiles or arrows they fire instead of how many additional ones. That's a good change. Spell like an awakened spell can no longer support blink skill. Then as he changes, the Hinakora um that's fury. Now because your enemies or your totem skills have a five percent chance to explode. Or your totem skill. Oh. Is that really the only ascendancy change? Passive tree change. Okay, that's a little disappointing. Uh, I guess it's really a patch where we don't need it as much, but still. 
Passive trade changes the previously granted increased accuracy against marked enemies, unique enemies, or nearby enemies, and set up more accuracy. Uh, Atlas trade changes with Speaker of the Dead can now touch up to 20. Oh! Ah! 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 That was busting nerf. With a distracted blank killing map boss can no longer cause her to leave without summoning additional bosses. Oh nice. The Ashes of the Stars, and sadly this was nerfed by a bunch of dumb chatters. Uh no longer provides 10 to 20 reservation efficiency with skills. It's still really strong because of the quality, but no, wait, what else does it have? I mean, it's still got the quality, but it's quality and what else? Oh yeah, plus one, that's it. Quality and plus one. Alright, I mean, I'm still farming it now. Man, restoration is hard now. Restoration is hard. And a momentary lapse in judgment. Wait, so all my like perfect ashes are worth so much now. They did say the best experimental unique they're adding is an amulet. True. Maybe it's crazy reservation. And you have to choose between quality or reservation. The heat shiver unique amulet gain 30 cold as extra firing as frozen enemies. Previously 100. Listing items can be made worse with the divine orb. Do you know, personally, I really enjoy these little like snarky remarks. I, re I, I think it adds a lot of soul. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm glad they do it. The replica Dragonfly flying flight provides 5 to 10 all rest instead of 10 to 15. 5 to 10% restoration. Uh else items and gems have 5 to 10 redu Oh, why on rate class would you do that, right? Uh the Combs and Spirit regenerate one rage for every 300 life. Oh. Right. Damn. 200% nerf. Made worse with the divine orb. The fire damage taken per second with flame touched on the annihilation is a bit too high for unique obtain. Um, like six thousand instead of ten thousand. Um, okay, cool. Back with the ephemeral edge, unique sword that was added maximum lightning damage equal to twenty percent. No longer scale of a minion's maximum. Edge. Relicash Impatience Unique Boots no longer has uh, lose them when you move or causes equal your maximum while stationary. Now as counts as having max numbers. Oh. Oh, but it's just always? Damn. Can't swap. I can wear them though. Good. Yeah, I mean, they removed them for boot swapping, which is annoying. But they're kind of good now. Got it? Well, there'll be ways to use them. There's not that much else on the boots, right? Um, From meme boots to top tier? Yeah, I think they'll see use. The replica buns of Buller now goes to summon Phantasm Raiding Spurs. So have 10% chance to refresh the duration. Proceed is unique. Oh! Dang. I don't think it gives you the charges. No, you can't discharge them. Replica Mist Wall is your now has your max charge to block spell damage if you have not blocked. Previously, 75 chance. Uh replica perfect form is being reworked. It no longer provides 10 to 15% increased dex, 70 to 100 life. Hollow Palm or Costless Flesh and Stone, it now provides Versatile Combatant and 20% chance to block attack damage. Versatile Combatant dog shit? Am I misremembering? What's Versatile Combatant again? Isn't that garbage? 
It's a gladiator node, right? That's what I thought. 350 spell block. Right. Wait, it no longer has 15 increased decks, 100 life, hollow palm, oracle, suppression stone. Doesn't that item barely have anything on it now? Just evasion and resist? I mean, it is a replica. They did try to replicate it. They missed. It has two things now. Okay. Replica Bitter Dream now has socket of gem supported by a level 15 elemental penetration. Previously level 1. Wow. Replica or sacrifice no longer is 1% of damage. Uh, Leisha's life instead provides calling strike on frozen enemies. Hinakora's lock can no longer foresee the result of corrupting an item at the altar of corruption. Standard in shambles. <coughs> Damn. The Maven releases all bosses at once. Modifier can once again roll on Maven invitations. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Uh, the following experimental bases can no longer be obtained. Aiming through. Is it mostly the normal and cruel bases, like the lower ones? This probation axe now has 15 max rage. Psychotic axe is 20 rage. Prime cleaver. So just a lot of buffs to a lot of them. So I guess experimental bases are going to be really interesting now. Soul rainbow is actually 10% buff. I should just up the attack speed on Soul Rainbow. Cool. Well, looks like a lot of buffs overall to um to experimental bases. Increases max quality, yeah. What's the uh what's the What's the one that lets you attack with poison with everything? What's that one called? Does that one get anything? So like everything you do poisons? Is that still here? It's still here, right? It still exists. You mad it? It still exists. Okay. Then play something that is interesting. Yeah. That was minus two prefix modifiers and a hundred percent increased explicit. Yeesh. be really interesting you can still make it plus two Ruth is specific changes all right guys we're gonna go look through all the ruthless changes I'm just kidding I'm not gonna play ruthless but I will play ruthless at some point whenever there's like a a lull whenever I have a time period to play it I really want to make like a streamer group found ruthless thing at some point 20% restoration as well you can influence it yeah Yeah, the simple example that is really good. Um, Foundry has been adjusted that it's not a single boss fight. Okay. Kirak League mods available, but that doesn't matter because we have access to everything because of the seventh gate or whatever, eighth gate, whatever it's called, sixth gate. I can't remember. Honestly, that's one of the biggest things they added to Path of Exile. I love the gate. It's so good. Seventh, yeah, seventh gate is so amazing. It's so amazing, dude. That means you can get essence farming. Every league. No essence by default? That's whatever. It's so good, dude. Seventh gate is so good. I forgot. That's huge. Yeah. You have a league start strats are different. What is the seventh gate? So they have something called gates on the atlas tree now that just let you teleport from one place of the tree to another. But if you have all six allocated and you allocate the seventh one called the seventh gate... You get every single possibility. So now that we don't have Essence for 2C, you allocate 7th Gate and you get Essence for 2C. You can get everything you want. And 
And something that not everybody knows is that the seventh gate works with the special harvest beast that gives you one free of every single atlas craft. So that means if you have seventh gate allocated, when you kill the beast, that gives you one free of every atlas craft. If you actually use every single thing that you can, you're saving, I think it's like 120 kills per beast. Like when, when I used the ones I used from my farming, I saved something like three or 4,000 kills in just the ones I was using. Saving? Well, I was using them. So yeah, it was saving. Like that was only the ones I wanted to use anyway. Feels hard to get all six gates for it? No. Just log in with something good? Yeah, when we're excited for something, we write log in. Hey, Phil. The Redeemer Simplex Army can have 20% increased reservation now? Yes, correct. And plus two gems. Did not use equal saving? Yeah. Um, user interface changes. Hovering the create button on character will display how many character slots are currently in use. That's going to be demoralizing for me. Uh, you can now use shift click on faded items in your main inventory to remove them from trade and sell window. You can now shift click on faded items in your main inventory to remove them from the trade and sell window. Oh, that's just the stack thing, right? Um, a partial stack. Pressing control click on NPC. Campaign that you can sell items to you. Oh, instantly on all of them? That's amazing. Uh, CO sir, brings up purchase. Oh, this is so nice quality of life things. Improve the highlighting and basic tool socket. Added a close button. Nice. Damn quality type condition is saved. Uh, pretty few bug fixes. There's probably not that many bugs left. <laughs> to be fair, they've been pretty good with bugs lately. <laughs> Fix some incorrect behavior with the spacing and spell cascade with curse heals that I never had to be fixed. 322. Nice. No, that's bad. Oh no. Before being reinstated. Right. <laughs> Goodbye, impending doom. Now, it should, from what I understand, still work on a cultist. Because if you remember, before 322B, people were saying that it felt okay to play on a cultist. So this is a Pathfinder only issue. So it means that Pathfinder Impending Doom is dead, but a cultist should, in theory, work. I am definitely too much of a bitch that I am not going to risk that it'll uh, work. But for those that are spicy, it might. Please buy more projectiles from skills by returning projectile. We're only dealing less damage with hits while returning. Minions would take no damage from roaming the imitation. Oh. Oh no, that's awful. That. Ah. Man, minions are gonna perma die. Is Gazzy in shambles after these notes? Well, Kenny Fisher by Bel Wait, what? How do people find this to begin with? Who like finds this and is like, well, Kenny Fisher, I'm going to try it. I'm going to put it in. Uh... Very for dots. Please about where the mage blood who calls other players flasks. Effect to be applied through through soul link. Be infinite. Oh wow. That's funny. Fix the bug where Ark was not able to chain back to target so you previously hit. Still cannot change to target immediately after chaining from it. Huh. So as long as there's three enemies, they can chain between them, correct? Dude, Ark sounds so cracked this thing. Two even? Wait, isn't Ark, Ark with the new, um, with the new, like, the Spectre on hit things? Isn't Ark insane? It literally says he can't with two. Yeah, you need three, right? Ark was not able to chain back to targets it had previously hit. Yes, yeah, so you need three. 
So you can't do two. It said it has previously hit. So it needs three. But before it couldn't. Before with three, it could not go tung tung tung. But now it can go tung tung tung. Yeah, sorry. Man, arc looks cracked though. It still cannot chain to a target immediately after chaining from it. It depends how you read it. Well, either way, it's a buffer arc. People misread the arc change though. Isn't arc singles very bad? Not anymore. Uh, arc always had more damage with ailments. Yeah, that's why people did ignite with it. But you get more damage per thing now. Um, fixed by where the debuff from siphoning trap were not applying to close enemies. Crafting cry support did not mention it. Can I modify the skills menu? Chains too. What do you mean? Chain worked on ailments in the past. Find hits. Do you raise the small dude, sir? Yeah, yeah. The new ascendancy. The wording change. Wait, so didn't get buffed? Wait, am I misreading something? The only thing that changed is the chaos armor support. That chaos armor support to K. Remove its scaling to K. Oh. We got 1% increased base crit. That's it. Ah, oh, I misunderstood then. Um, Based on bug where triggered actions for looking for something to target, such as a skill supported by mana for charges, could pick things that you don't have a line of sight to. Falk escape can sometimes face the wrong direction, most noticeable with Reap. Um, will that be a nerf for Awakened Cascade Reap? For the overlap? For which chain hook could pull you to a name locked enemy that was not within range of the attack. Blink Arrow and Mirror would display their life incorrectly. That's a small buff. Oh, okay. Glacial Hammer did not state in its description that only unique enemies will shatter when hit by Glacial Hammer. And on one less than third life. Oh, just a descriptive thing. Well, Volcanic well, Fisher s stated it exploded one less time than it actually did. Been updated. Reeve didn't display its maximum stage. Incorrect description for evasion and edge shield. What was the thing that they... I, I actually forgotten what it was now, but it was something like nice and huge. Oh, it's the ES thing. Are we ever getting that back? You remember they they had the thing that i'd been asking for for like three or four years they finally put it in that they would put the energy shield above your life and then it crashed the game somehow and they never put it back in i'm gonna harass them over that i'm gonna message them every league and be like so can i have that back i was asking for it for three years you gave it to me for half a day <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Um, fix the visual bug with Akima Makuna. Visual of Bizarro's death slash not matching its damaging area. Oh, finally. That actually killed me. Th this, this literally killed me. And it almost killed me twice. It almost killed me twice. It actually killed me once on a like new leveling character that couldn't tank a slash. And I was like, well, I'm not going to get hit by the slash. And I was standing far away. Like if he was slashing bottom left, I was top right and I died. And I was like, ah. Uh, Rose and Blight encounter being unkillable. Holy fuck. How many years since Blight came out? How many years? Yeesh. I've seen that bug fix before. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe it's fixed now. Fix the bug with the trade window, but not correctly account for merging currency stacks. Bringing your first rogue marker, do not grant credit. Harvest craft, craft option for a stack of delirium into different cannot be used on code green or fine. Oh, standard problems. Rare bug with letters could be missing. Oh, that was fun. This medic panel did not display your gems correctly. For device. Uh, inaccessible shrine could spawn in the graveyard. 
All right. Do we just... Uh, all right. Okay. So my TLDR take after reading, I think this is probably the healthiest patch we've ever received. Like in terms of the meta, in terms of things, and that's even without seeing just like the things they're going to do. I'm a little bit disappointed with the content. I would say if this league, if this league had a new boss, like new end game boss stuff, um, it would be a literal 10 out of 10. I still give it pretty high though, like an eight in form of excitement before playing it. Obviously like it's literally just going to depend on how fun it is to play. That's just every league, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty positive. The league boss. Yeah, but I don't consider like Sia a boss. So when they used to like Sia as an example of difficulty, didn't they say there was a boss? Are you excited when you kill like Sia? I mean, I'm not. I one shot her. Like, I don't consider that a boss. It's not what I'm thinking when I think of boss. But I'm very excited. I'm very positive. But like, this is a very close patch to 10 out of 10. I give it like 7 or 8 in terms of excitement. There's so much exciting stuff. I'm just sitting here thinking like, what do I want to league start? Can I make Essence Drain work again? Am I doing Blight Contagion Trickster as my league starter? They said this boss was just below the pinnacle ones. Okay, but I think... <laughs> Personally, I probably would have been a little bit disappointed with the pinnacle boss if it didn't have an uber version. Like I wanted, that's what I said in my prediction video too. I'm really looking for new uber bosses um, because we haven't had a new end game thing in such a long time. However, this is still going to be hundreds of hours worth of things to do. I'm still super excited. I'm still super excited, but it's like it's over a year since the ubers were added. That means there's two years since the new bosses were added. So two years without any new bosses you know that that is a little bit that's a long time because we were usually getting new bosses every year um but this is insane though so many cool things to do